Well, good morning. Welcome to Burien. Uh, we are, I'm King County Executive Dow Constantine. We are here today to announce uh, that my proposed biennial budget, which I will uh, introduce two weeks from yesterday, will include funding to expand a promising law enforcement referral program here in Burien uh, and to two other cities throughout South King County. It's called Law Enforcement Assisted Diversion, or LEAD, and it aims to improve public safety while giving people the chance for a new life. LEAD provides a way for police officers and others to steer people into community-based care without going through arrests or court appearances. It's a way to reach people not quite ready to help themselves, but who need a guiding hand. LEAD gives police the option to divert low-level offenders into community-based treatment and support services, including housing, health care, job training, treatment, and mental health support. Instead of processing them at great cost and to little effect through the traditional criminal justice system. Seattle police have expanded LEAD precinct by precinct since it was introduced in the Belltown neighborhood in 2011. Uh, that has been a joint effort between King County and the city of Seattle. Today's announcement marks the first time a city outside Seattle will be able to refer people to the program. Uh, to the credit of Mayor Mata and Councilmember Marks, they've recognized that LEAD has the potential to change lives, and I look forward to the Burien Council and the community determining how LEAD can meet Burien's unique needs. I've directed funding through our Mental Illness and Drug Dependency Fund to expand LEAD to another King, South King County city next year and yet another in 2020. We go into this with eyes wide open. Yes, the University of Washington study in 2015 showed that LEAD significantly reduced recidivism, uh, and we are going to track the program carefully to make sure that trend continues and ensure that our behavioral health dollars are making a real difference in people's lives and in safety in the community. This is a true partnership between public defenders and police and prosecutors. The prosecutor's office is all in. The Public Defender Association contracts with behavioral health providers for outreach and case management. We have made great strides in meeting the tremendous need in our region for mental health and addiction services. Two years ago, our Heroin and Prescription Opioid Addiction Task Force cited at the very top of their list the need for expanded treatment for uh, addiction, and so we did just that. Working with Balmer Group, we, uh, and joining with other partners, we have made same-day access to behavioral health services a top priority. And today, just uh, less than a year really after we launched that effort with Balmer Group, we have essentially reached treatment on demand for opioid disorder treatment for anyone who seeks it. Depending on the day and the type of need, there is usually no wait for detox, outpatient treatment, residential treatment, medication-assisted treatment, again, for the people who reach out and seek it. Our next challenge is for people who are not reaching out and seeking that treatment. We must go to the places where we can have conversations that get people thinking about a new way of life. That's a lot of what LEAD is about. And I want to thank Mayor Mata and Burian for stepping up to become part of this solution. I want to thank you all for being here today. And it is my honor, uh, you know, I mentioned that this is a partnership between the defender, police, and the prosecutor. We are very fortunate in this region to have uh, these partners all working together rather than constantly at odds, working together on how to create a safer community and how to redeem lives. And no prosecutor in this country is doing more in reforming the justice system and figuring out how we can use these tools to help people back uh, on track than our own prosecutor, Dan Satterberg. Dan.
Thank you. And I want to commend the uh, executive and the county council and our city, our municipal partners, and all the partners who have made LEAD uh, work. It's a big day that we're here uh, standing in Burien, getting ready to take LEAD to scale. Because for the last seven years, it has proven to us and to the nation that it is the better outcome when it comes to dealing with people with drug addiction. I commend the executive for his vision to make a community-based care infrastructure throughout the entire county of King so that every police officer one day will be able to have that same option that the Seattle police have, which is to call for help instead of take someone to jail. And concurrently, because I so believe that LEAD is the better outcome, I'm announcing today that uh, in the King County Prosecutor's Office that we will no longer routinely file cases of possession of less than one gram of drugs into court because, quite frankly, it doesn't work. And we found something that works much better. That's about 1,000 cases a year that today go into the King County District Courts. Uh, and at the end of that process, which I will describe later to you, uh, at the end of the process, there is a gross misdemeanor conviction, and that's about all. What the LEAD model offers is a new approach. It's an approach that offers help, not handcuffs. It's an approach that offers connections instead of convictions. And it's an approach that offers harm reduction instead of aimless due process. And it's harm reduction, not just for the individual who needs our help and our compassion to get better, to recover from a medical condition, but it's also harm reduction for the community that they live in. Because people who are in the LEAD program are getting help, and they're doing less harm to themselves, but also less harm to their neighborhood. We know this approach works because we've been doing it for the last seven years. You know, for a long time, we've all been talking about the so-called war on drugs, and how many times have you heard people say, we can't arrest our way out of this. How many times have you heard people say, this is a medical condition, not a legal issue, not a moral failing, not a criminal decision. When people are addicted to drugs, their bodies crave drugs. They have to find those drugs. It's time we started to act like we believed those things. And that's what today is about. Today is about taking the LEAD program to scale throughout King County and to stop using the criminal justice system as our primary response to drug addiction. Now most of the cases that we file in King County uh, for drug cases are under one gram. Actually most of them are actually uh, about one-tenth of a gram or even less. What we're talking about, just to be clear, is not people who are drug dealers. We're talking about people who are addicted to small amounts of drugs. And the uh, approach that we've taken over the years, in the last ten years, is to put those cases, instead of into felony court, although it's technically a felony, we're putting them instead into the district court in a program we call the expedited program. Although there's nothing fast about the expedited program, we found out that on average it takes about a year for those cases to resolve because it, since it's no one's priority, the cases come to us about three to four months after the arrest, they're filed three to four months later, then they go into court and a summons is sent to that person's last known address. Well, by then, the person who's got a daily drug habit probably is no longer at that address. And so an arrest warrant issues. Turns out in those thousand cases that go through this process every single year, 1.4 arrest warrants per case are issued. So more than one arrest warrant, which means a judge has ordered the police, when they find this person, to arrest them and take them to jail. That's an incredible use of our resources. In fact, an estimated 15,000 jail days a year are consumed by these 1,000 cases. So an average person who is being charged in the district court for possessing a tiny amount of drugs uh, is going to spend on average two weeks in jail. That's not two weeks that holds them accountable. That's not two weeks that treats them. That's two weeks that takes them off of the street, that anything that they had built during their life to have a job, have a place to live, all of those things can be taken away during their two-week period in jail. And then finally, at the very end of that process, they get a gross misdemeanor conviction. There's never an offer of help because our courts are not set up to help people with drug addiction. We have a little 
a sheet that compares the current model, the court-based due process model, with the lead model. In the current model, it takes a year to get accountability. At the end of that year, there is no offer of treatment. In the lead model, within a day, within an hour of the arrest, there can be a connection made between the person who's arrested and a case manager who begins to work with them on what their needs are right then and there. And we have found, and it's no surprise, that when you try to help people, that your outcomes are way better than when you just try to punish people. And that's what this is all about. We still have a program in, in, in King County Superior Court, the drug court program, which I continue to support. It has a capacity of 350 people. And the people in that program are doing well. It's a well-funded program, and it's successful. But we know that the drug problem in our community vastly exceeds 350 people. What the LEAD program can do as it begins to reach out to the far corners of King County is to offer the police officers in that jurisdiction an extra tool for their tool belt. And that tool is, rather than take you to jail, I'm going to get you some help. And we know that that works way, way better. So it is time to take it to scale. I'm excited that we're going to start doing uh, that very soon here in the city of Burien. And we'll be back to answer your questions as we go along. But right now, I want to introduce the Honorable Jimmy Mata, the mayor of Burien. Thank you, uh, Prosecutor Satterberg. You know, today, uh, it's, a, it's a special day for me because I never shared this story, but you know, my father, um, God bless his soul, died of a drug overdose in Burien, Washington. Mm -hmm. And I wish the programs would have been there for him to have the help that he needed as we were growing up. You know, it's tough to say I am, my father was a drug addict, but I love him and I'm the man I am because of him. But in the past, uh, lead programs have been inspired uh, by different inf information that the community members have given to uh, community leaders and political leaders. And Burien is no different. You know, I'm looking forward with the council and the staff give, to give an opportunity to community members of what kind of program we're going to design for Burien specifically. Uh, we believe that we'll benefit from the resources that are going to be allocated to Burien because we have a lot of challenges in our community. A lot of children that their parents are having to struggle with drug addiction. Uh, but I'm looking forward to having that discussion with my fellow council members to see what makes sense in our community members. And I want to thank the staff for the work they've done. And again, very, very grateful that uh, this is being announced in Burien and that uh, you're giving money to Burien to help deal with some of the challenges we have in our city. Thank you very much. And with that, I want to introduce uh, my fellow council member, uh, Crystal Marks. I was doing a great job and actually a uh, champion of the LEAD program. Thank you. Good afternoon. The LEAD program is something that I looked into when I was running for council this last August through November. Something that I found to be a way for the community to give input to the services that they wanted to see within their own community. And having that community drive behind a service, I think, is what will make it more, more of an impact. I'm grateful for staff for putting together the framework for strengthening families that the council approved back in early August. The LEAD program, as we tailor it for Burien's needs, would fit into that very well and has more funding sources to come to it that I'm really excited about and seeing our community access. I'm grateful for staff for all the work that they've put in on this, um, especially that we as a council will have an opportunity to talk about this program and the public will be able to attend and give their feedback as well. However, something like this in Burien, where we see needs that aren't typical to Seattle, where we see a one-size-fits-all model does not work in our community, this program, this LEAD program, as tailored for us, is incredibly important and needed. I'm very grateful for our King County leadership to consider Burien for the next site for this, and I'm excited to hear your feedback as well. With that, I'd like to introduce King County Council Member Dave Updegrove. Good morning. Uh, my name is Dave Up the Grove. I'm an elected member of the King County Council, and I'm proud to represent part of the city of Burien, where I was born and raised. Um, I'm here to express my thanks and appreciation to King County Executive Dow Constantine and our King County Prosecutor Dan Satterberg. Um, I don't think there's two gentlemen in this country who have done more to advance progressive criminal justice reform, and today is one more example. Uh, I'm also here wearing my, my hat as chair of the King County Council's Budget Committee, 
to express my enthusiastic support for this funding for the LEAD program and express my strong support for the policy change that our prosecutor announced today. You know, the reason LEAD is so exciting is because it's predicated on the premise that it's very important to hold people accountable, but do it in a way that gets people back on the right track in life rather than a downward spiral. And it has some real benefits. It recognizes the dignity of, of people and their role in families and communities. And by doing so, we create stronger families and healthier communities. It also is cost effective. Quite simply, it saves taxpayers money. And finally, and it's important to a lot of people is this, it keeps us safe. The data shows that this approach reduces crime in communities by reducing recidivism. So it's not often as elected official you get to support policies that support strong healthy families and communities, save taxpayers money, and keep us safe. And by expanding this program into uh, more parts of the county, including the South End, that's what we're doing today. Uh, we couldn't do this without all of our partners, including our partners in law enforcement, and it's my pleasure to introduce and welcome our King County Sheriff, Mitzi Johanknik. Good morning. Um, I wake up every morning at first, like many of us, thinking about our families and, and being a mother, an aunt, a sister, and thinking about what's going on with them. The next thought in my head is, as a sheriff, what am I worrying about for our community? And what can we do to help improve the health and safety of the members in it? I link community with family. I have the opportunity today to embrace a program that links the family of law enforcement to our community. And it is so important that we, as members of law enforcement, take every available course and asset that comes to us to treat somebody as a family member. We all have uh, touches in our life of addiction, um, mental illness, and other things that we deal with. And so this is no different. It gives us an opportunity at the front lines to give decision making to the deputies and officers in the sheriff's office who are interacting with that individual and linking closely to provide services right then and there. I'm grateful to the executive, council member up the Grove and others, uh, Mr. Satterberg, for helping us with this. And most importantly though, I've learned a lot from the next person I'm gonna introduce to talk to you today who has helped me in many aspects as I've become sheriff uh, and working with the community. And I'm grateful to, to announce to you, Director Dugard, uh, to speak to you next. Good morning, my name is Lisa Dugard. I'm the director of the Public Defender Association. We're privileged to be the project management team for LEAD. Um, which was born in Seattle King County in 2011 and at this juncture um, has been replicated all around the country. I call that to your attention because the point that Miramata made earlier and uh, Councilmember Marks um, is really important. LEAD is a methodology for responding effectively to law violations that occur because of behavioral health conditions and extreme poverty. The way in which that methodology works is adjusted and adapted to each community's needs. And in that way, Burien or uh, Kent or any other community in King County that moves down this road will be following in the footsteps of communities as small as Charleston, West Virginia, Santa Fe, New Mexico, um, Albany, New York, uh, small county in um, New York State, I think, has the distinction now of being the smallest community to adopt lead all the way to Los Angeles, California, and Harris County, Houston, Texas. So obviously those are very diverse communities with a um, wide assortment of needs, but what they have in common um, is a couple of, uh, is recognizing a couple of truths. One, um, the problems that arise, law violation and behavior problems that arise due to unmet behavioral health needs and extreme poverty are not minor, they are serious. They are serious problems for individuals and serious problems for communities. And two, they are so serious that they deserve a meaningful response. And the several decade 
attempt to meet that need through the criminal justice system has been an abject failure. So all of those communities are groping toward, we, we've heard and understand that we can't arrest our way out of this problem, but that can't be the end of the conversation. What are we going to do instead? I just need to take a moment, I wanna acknowledge a few folks and then introduce um, some really special speakers to wrap us up here. Um, I wanna acknowledge that we do work in support of um, efforts to implement LEAD all around the country, have an amazing team here that does that technical support work. Nowhere in this country, however, is there a constellation of elected leaders as visionary and courageous and committed to actually solving these kind of problems as the folks arrayed behind me. Um, and this is elected officials, this is law enforcement leaders, this is um, uh, line officers and um, neighborhood leaders who have really stepped forward into the challenge of we want to take it seriously, we want to address root causes, we want better outcomes, and we understand we have to commit to a paradigm shift. We cannot go backwards. So um, just want to really call out um, with great appreciation the remarkable leadership of the men and women standing behind me. Similarly, um, LEAD would never have been a thing um, that anybody replicated or um, proposed to take to scale, but for the remarkable willingness of law enforcement officers to work in an entirely different um, paradigm than the job that had been given them for many years. They have more than responded to that invitation, um, have proven to be incredible partners. Um, and then the other half of that, uh, what I call out a, a few people who are standing here, um, is the incredible case managers who are their guerrilla case managers. They are not office based. They go out, they find people where they're at, both psychologically and physically. They're entirely result oriented. They keep going until the situation gets better. And I do want to call out that they're doing that for remarkably low wages in the um, uh, very hot economy that we have in King County. These people are um, heroic in their, in their commitment to this work. Um, symbolic of that, so LEAD works by persistence and staying with a person and their actual situation and addressing their actual needs until things get better. That can take a minute, honestly. So it's not transactional. It's a matter of months and sometimes years before that really pays off. But at the end of that road, what officers have found is that people they expected to see die on the street and never um, be in a better position and never be able to uh, really shift their behavior have um, been able to step into an entirely different um, uh, situation and um, chance at a meaningful life. One of those people um, is here with us today, Johnny Bousquet, and I want to introduce Johnny, um, who's incredibly courageous. He's going to explain how this has worked for him and with him, who I am going to call up despite that he's wearing a Cal jersey, which I'm not sure what would have led to that decision, but anyway, is his <laughs> remarkable um, case manager, Steve Bass, and we'll let them close it out. Thank you. Hi, my name is Johnny Bousquet. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say, um, yeah, they're talking about all this good stuff, but behind that stuff, there's a person. Yeah, lead reduces recidiv recidivism, however you say that. Yeah, lead will uh, meet you where you're at, but not only does lead change lives, lead saves lives. I'm, I'm alive because of this guy right here, because of the people that are that are getting paid those remarkably low wages. Um, I don't think they do this for the money. They do this because something wakes them up in the middle of the night and it's, they're, they're angels. They really are. I wouldn't, I really wouldn't be here. I can't emphasize that point strongly enough. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. I was out on the streets. I used to be somebody before I was a drug addict and uh, because of them, I'm somebody again. You know, when I didn't believe in myself, they believed in me. You know, they came to, to hospitals, to, to rehab, to jail, bought me books, magazines, took me to appointments to get medicine, cried with me, prayed with me, all that stuff, you know? Um, I, I, I just can't say strongly enough that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. Um, they, when I was doing drugs, they said, how can we make your life safer? How, how I noticed that you're miserable. How, how can we give you some kind of satisfaction? What can we do for you? When, Everybody else forgot about me when people would walk by me and look at me like I didn't deserve to have a heartbeat. These people nurtured me and loved me and they didn't just do it 
on Monday through Friday, they come to the hospital on Saturdays and Sundays when I tried to kill myself. They, they, they told me they would be devastated if I died, you know? When I didn't want to live, they wanted me to live. And uh, they're helping me get back in contact with my kids. They're making me feel like I'm worth that. Um, I, I can't say enough on, on what this does. And without the funding, they can't do that. They, they can't save lives. And by saving my life, other people that are in the situation that I was in are able to see me and be inspired. I have people come up to me all the time and say, man, because you're doing it, I feel like I can do it. You know, And, and not everybody's gonna be abstinent right away and all of that stuff, and they understand that, and they, that's why they meet you where you're at. And instead of being in and out of jail, I'm in and out of appointments nowadays. You know, Tomorrow, I'm, I'm probably gonna get hired for a new job. Guess who's taking me to my job interview, you know? Guess who bought me this shirt and tie, you know? <laughs> I, I just wouldn't be able to do it without them, and I'm just really thankful. This, this Steve right here. Go ahead, Steve. My name is Steve Bass. I am a lead a gorilla case manager and also a Cal Bear. Uh, one of the things that makes LEAD uh, so special and unique is our ability to do harm reduction work. Um, folks who are experiencing, experiencing substance use disorders have goals and aspirations like everyone else. In fact, I'd say some of our clients have bigger dreams than we do. As a LEAD case managers, we hear change talk all of the time. Even while folks are in the throes of their substance use, these conversations will be missed by a compliance-based program. We are trained in motivational interviewing, which allows us to recognize change shock and help our clients put that into a tangible plan. I hear change shock working with folks who present as being completely okay with their substance use, and I have clients who have work readiness plans for when they're ready to do UA, and they have resumes ready and jobs picked out, uh, and they've done all this work while being a substance user. Well, while Johnny was struggling with his substance use, he was already working with an organization to help him get visitation rights for his son. In fact, we had legal documents for visitation ready to file for when he took care of his warrants. During the time Johnny would not have been welcome at compliance-based programs, he received a housing voucher, he became a client at Community Psychiatric, he got his food handler's card, and he performed at Columbia City's Beat Walk because he's an amazing musician. We were able to work on Johnny's anxiety in this time too. Johnny now carries a notebook around with him where he writes down his fears and his goals and he feels a sense of mastery when he can cross those out. Um, Johnny was able to identify his anxiety as a trigger for his substance use, which has been really huge moving forward in his recovery. Doing harm reduction work allows us to be there on the journey with our clients. I was with Johnny when he was given $30,000 from the Sound Transit Authority to relocate um, because of the location of his old apartment. And he blew $30,000 in three months on his addiction. Um, and being there with him um, and having those conversations during that time have been informative in Johnny's planning going forward. Like he said, he's got a job interview tomorrow and now I'm able to talk to him about how he's gonna plan for that income moving forward because I was there with him when he lost that $30,000. Just at a bare minimum, what compliance-based models miss that LEAD is so good at is the opportunity to build relationships with clients wherever they are on their journey. I'd say another great thing about our harm reduction approach is that it allows us to see the stages of change and progress where other programs do not. I've had clients who are mixing opioids and benzos and barely responsive with upper respiratory slowdown and extremely slow breathing. I feel much safer having them in our office next to a nursing staff um, who can help. Our on-site doctor recently started a hep C treatment through our office. Now I have a client who is planning on switching to smoking rather than using IV needles for drug use after the hep C treatment. And to us, that's a big deal. I have other clients who are still using substances but not using heroin, and they're on medicated assistant treatment, and that gives them more time to go out and work on their goals because they're not trying to commit crimes and do the things it takes to get more heroin. So I think that's a big deal. Uh, and I'm glad to be here and I'm glad to see LEAD expanding. Thank you for your time. And let me in closing reiterate that um, we're very fortunate to be in a place where although each of these players plays their assigned role well, the defender, the prosecutor, the police, the courts, we have more than that. We are united in a vision of a community where all people will have the opportunity to thrive. And in doing so, 
where the entire community will be made safer and more prosperous. And we are doing, as we're able to see them, the things that move us closer to that shared vision. Thank you for being with us here today.